it's hello from me. And it's hello from him. It's Jim and um, Tom back Tom. again discussing cartoons. This the week's, best of the week. Of the week's gone by. The best of the week, yeah. Um, yeah, and um, uh, it's been a very interesting week, Tom. Yes. Vera Lynn, 102 years of age, died. This is a Mark Knight cartoon from the Herald Sun. And uh, she was the sweetheart of the forces. I think she might be one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Judge of all the shit that's going down Well, she it. was sort of inspiring <laughs> people because she represented home. And we'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when. But now, and that's a long time ago. Yeah. That's the first, second World Actually, War. Actually, I'm not too sure how will this will turn out. So, yeah. look, look at that cartoon down the front where um, the, the Chinese premiers saluting but he's belting um, hey, scomo as he over, does it yeah and he's giving everybody the finger you've got the american copper wearing the old-fashioned um uh, you know now you'll owner. notice here look at um the bible yeah trump of his bible and it's upside down yes and then um boris boris he's eating he's nice crumbs there was an article during the week about um, English getting Australian Tim Tam. Yes, is he eating a Tim Tam? Yes. Oh, it's a Tim. Ah, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah, when they had the trade deal. Well, that's I right. mean, it's a really complicated cartoon, but Mark Knight's really set it all out nicely. He's done a brilliant job on it. I just yeah. found that uh, it was his impact. And then it's just, yeah, even though it's chaos, it was yeah. really well done. So I'm pretty sure that she's glad to get out of this place. And yeah, I don't think she a wants... Siege, what a wonderful world. Yeah, but I don't think that she wants to meet us again, don't know where, don't know when, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the present day looks worse than it did in the Second World War. Yes. And this is the Trump rally. This is David Rowe, the Financial Review. The absent majority. <laughs> With... Um, with death clapping yes. yeah see what happened was um make a trump and then they had the expectation that at least a million people were going to turn up to this rally because mm. this rally was supposed to be kicking off his um sort of re-election chances mm. and it was a dismal failure you look at all those um all those chairs yeah. with the crosses <laughs> painted on each yeah. one of them and what's the story about the um, the Empress? Well, new clothes, he's clothes, wearing yeah. nothing. <laughs> he's really getting stuck in. Is that, is that the new look Trump? Well, he's been like that for quite a while, according to David Rowe. Yes. Yeah, they, they call it the, the China flu. Yeah. Yeah. And here we have David Rowe again with David. The final Trump. Yeah. yeah, ride that sucker. Now, isn't that a powerful cartoon? Look yes. at it. And, and 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 look at the all those silhouettes at the bottom. You've got graveyards. You've got demonstrations. You've well, it's all the chaos around it all beneath him, and he just wants to ride over that because yeah. he's just totally focused on, on his um, re-election. Re-election. And look, look at the moon. It's got a cloud. Look at the shoes. Look at the shoes. <laughs> it's got the, it's got the, 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 the moon as a COVID um, symbol with the cloud going through it, which is like um, in that Salvador Dali movie where the, yes. the cloud goes through the moon and a woman's eye gets cut. And you'll notice the Twitter bird's no longer there. Yes, that's gone. He's been censored too many times. I think he's abandoned Twitter. David Rose really got an apocalyptic apop view to uh, American mm. politics. And I think someone said, you know, it's just, it's almost a sight that you don't want to see. And <laughs> you can't not see it again, you know. That's right. Unsee it. That's right. Matt Golding of the Age. University fees to increase for humanities. <laughs> Yeah, it's something that they slipped in on the Friday night. Um, and uh, the point is, the governments, why are they doing this? Why are they trying to um, get people to do engineering and... Well, well it's, such a, it's such a silly, short-sighted um, policy. Well, 
At Dan Tien announced that Fiji University courses in health, teaching and science will be cut while the cost of popular humanities, law and commerce, yeah, commerce will degrees doubled, will increase. Will be doubled or even a third, yeah. you know, tripled. That's Tien holding up his, you know, um, piece of paper. I don't know. It's, um, I mean, can you imagine if they, during this crisis, if they took down all the television and they took down all the radio and all the movies, all right, which are humanities based? They well, are... it's about thinking and analysing. Yeah. We wouldn't have any um, commentators here who have a look at the issue and look behind the lines and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, when he says think again, yeah, think again. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I, I, I don't... And of course, they, they bring this out on the Friday. Um, I don't know, it's just... Well, they don't want you to think about it. They've got to get saving somewhere, but... They don't want you to think about it. No, no. Well, as um, Sotomo says, they, you know, they're just cutting back. And it continues on with Cathy Wilcox yeah. of the Sydney Morning Herald. You know, studying your humanities gives you insight into why humans do the things they do, like why this government wants to starve the humanities. I guess we'll never, never know. <laughs> never know. You don't know how to think about it. Yeah. And another, this is David Pope of the Canberra Times. Um, and this is uh, Teen again. The, yeah. the, what the, will happen if the kids put two and two together? Yeah. Hopefully we'll discourage anyone from gaining literacy in both maths and the humanities. Yeah. So they won't be able to put the numbers together and they won't be able to analyse it. Yeah. And poor old um, um, Dan Andrews yes. in his Peter Brolman uh, Geelong advertiser cartoon. He's had a tough week because he's had to deal with all the branch stacking of um, the ALP in his state and the COVID. Um, and of Increase, course, the, the COVID's man. gone yes. wrong. Um, Victoria was the shining example to the other states. And then all of a sudden, the second well, wave as came as through. They said Mr. 86%. Did they call him that? Yes. And the the little um, the little uh, uh, cat in the corner saying, two mask. How, how do you mask branch stacking? Look at all those flies. Yes. And how do you how do you how do you mask COVID? And I love the little effect of the speech balloon is in front of his um, his uh, dark Depression. thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> little 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 thing there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark yeah. Knight, the Herald Sun. Now this is. This <laughs> well, he wanted to um, increase the testing. Yes. And, and of but course, the, um, the AFA, Connor McKinnon. Yeah, Connor McKinnon, who plays for Essendon. He's actually had 11 tests anyway. 11. <laughs> 11 tests where one he was yes, one he was no, yes. one he was yes, one he was no. And of course, you know, they've they're got the, the, the testing on the freeway like, like it's. Um, it's been five weeks now he's been in quarantine mm. and he hasn't got a game in. And of course um, they they had the unprecedented thing of cancelling a whole game um, and Essendon missed the whole week because of it. But I mean, you know, because sport's such a big deal, so he puts a, a plane on the freeway <laughs> and it's like all the, um, the, the, yeah. the, the, uh, the alcohol testing that they do, but look, they're sticking it all up their noses. No, yes. Good cartoon, mate. Matt Golden of the Age. And a great suggestion for your Victorian number plates. Yes. COVID-019. The Victoria's place not, not to, to be. be. That's <laughs> right. And a little symbol there in, in, the, in the inverted triangle. And here he is again. Um, Peter Broman, Geelong Advertiser. Yeah, and um, you know, there there is our, there's Dan the Man. He's Dan saying Andrews. remove those, you know, his rose tinted glasses. Yeah, and the, his little cat saying, Elton? <laughs> yeah, it's not a rosy outlook. He does sure. look a bit like Elton, doesn't he, Elton John? It's a very good one. Yeah. Uh, Matt Golding of The Age. Dan Andrews again. Now, this is about... A plan to divide, divert Australians returning from overseas away from Melbourne was abandoned. They were going to send them to other states rather than to Melbourne, but I'm not sure the reason why, but they're going to continue. Maybe they figure, well, 
that's big enough outbreak here might as well keep it in the uh, Victoria. And he was also going to bring away from in the, the clean states. He was also going to bring in the army, wasn't he? Yes. And he, he changed his mind on that. Flip flopped on that one. So yes. he's gone from being um, squeaky clean as far as COVID 19 has gone to um, pariah. Well, actually, Plus I the, did hear a suggestion that there may be union involvement here. In Debarkation. Okay. The army, you know, the police association or union. Yeah. It, it was suggested they say no, but it was suggested that they objected to the army coming in and doing, taking over their job. And when did you hear that? Like, what was that? Well, mean? that was rumoured in the papers. Ah, the papers. Yes. Okay. So can we believe, uh, the, if I did humanities, maybe I could have uh, <laughs> yes, learned you, a bit you, more. You, you could have <laughs> filtered the facts from the fake. Yes. Yeah. Matt Golding yeah. again, the age? Dan Andrews, COVID-19, and another thing, Neplin. <laughs> we all heard about the stories of families telling to leave their kids at home. Those ones who are not doing so well at school, so they won't drag the school's um, school down. When they had the test, did yes. they? Okay, yeah. So we're saying now it would be nothing in Victoria to stay home. And of course, all the, all the states are saying that except Victoria. Yes. In the country. Oh, well, yeah, they are saying stay home, but. No, but on Victoria's, no not, Victoria's <laughs> not saying that, are they? All the other states yeah. are. And this is connected to Peter Brolman at the Geelong Advertiser. Yeah, Dan Andrews, the coast, Caravan Park, Vex flips on the hotspots. They wanted to um, ban people from the uh, hotspot areas that we you know, there's large amount of um, COVID infections from um, going to you know, the caravan parks down the coast, stuff like that. But they they, they flip-flopped on it. Yeah. And the particular cartoon about it, um, this one is reserved for Gladys, they're talking about um, the the Premier of... Well, um, yeah, she was quoted in the paper as saying, you know, let Victorians in but don't interact with them. Mm. But so that's... So how can it be, how can you... Filter yeah. someone out by saying, you know, yeah. oh, you come from... Um, yeah, Victoria, yeah, you, I can tell. I yeah, can tell. well, they did, they actually, there's this particular look about Victorians. And yeah. it's that... Matt Golding, The Age, and there's the second wave, and there's, if you look closely on the splosh, you can see the Japanese famous wave coming through and of course the second wave is is is, yeah. is toilet paper. Panic buying again. Panic buying again, that's right. And um, they're gold in the age. He does another one on the same subject, um, panic buying and they're dropping them. In the letter someone said in the future we'll look back on the current situation and think these were the toilet paper years. Well it's a great symbol isn't it? <laughs> Um, a lot David, of people will have their wood drops and toilet paper right now. <laughs> David Rowe, the Financial Review. Now this is um, the COVID Club Lounge. Now as usual, David crams 258,000 things into each cartoon he does. You've got death organising the, the Qantas plane. You've got... <laughs> well, you've got the ABC there. It's a rag doll presenting the news. That's right. Because there's been uh, cuts to um, the ABC. And look at the shape of that table he's sitting around. Yeah, well, it's the National Cabinet. And, so and uh, they can all combine together. And look at the wheel of the Qantas plane. Yeah. And look look at those um, uh, those symbols that he's well, holding in his hand. to City, Queensland, yeah. Tasmania. Delayed. All being delayed. Yeah. And of course, um, what are you saying, Scotty? Gladys, it's Dan. From Victoria, you're not going to believe this, but Emma Al Albarici just served me a croissant. Hello, and you hung up on her because she's moonlighting. That's right. <laughs> They're referring to all the sackings of the ABC. Yes. Matt Golding, the age. Dan calls in the troops. Then the retreats. So he did a backflip. Yeah. Damn. 
And this is a really good cartoon. Kathy, Kathy Wilcox is a Sydney yeah. Morning Herald. No news is good news because they've cut the, the early um, bulletin on the, the ABC. bulletin. Yeah. I actually was listening to a podcast on that and, and apparently they said the amount of money it takes to do that one show, yeah. it's not repeated all year, yeah. that that money could be better spent on going towards early news. Well, also, everybody changes how they get their news. Yeah. Everybody gets it a different way now. So, so there's a lot of older people yeah, who... They're the, they're the ones who are the rusted on ones. Who so used to watch, yes. listen to the 745 um, news bulletin. They haven't like, got a particular jingle about it. Yeah, 250 job yeah. losses. And younger people don't even know. Well, time. younger people wouldn't be getting out of bed at 7.45 <laughs> anyway, would they? No. Now, I think this is the best cartoon all day. Our focus is on jobs, jobs, jobs. Yeah, it's very good. All the cutbacks at the ABC building. that are going next door to the Centrelink. And notice how the C for the ABC is connected to the C yeah, for ABC Centrelink. And look at look at <laughs> look at um, the Prime Minister's shirts. It's full of Centrelink yeah, and Scott's ABC. Scott says like it's a Warren shirt, isn't it? But it's got Centrelink symbols and ABC symbols. Yes, it's jobs, jobs, jobs. Yes, losses, losses, losses. Matt Quantus, Golding of the Age. Yep. Chief Executive Alan Joyce has called on the federal government to extend the JobKeeper program for industries hit hardest by the virus pandemic after the airline announcement with 6,000 workers and cut 15 billion in cost. 16 billion? 15 billion. 15, I should yeah. say. 15 billion. So they took you <laughs> Going to Centrelink, yeah. there's curious stuff going to Centrelink. Yeah. So there's no flights going anywhere, but everyone's going to Centrelink. Now, this is David Pope of the Canberra Times, and typical David, he goes to the source of uh, what it's, he follows the money trail. Yes. And the money trail is that, that um, that's, um, that's Joyce, um, Alan Joyce, the CEO of Qantas, and he's screaming out for help, but at the same time... Well, the um, government's been saying, yeah, we're all in this together. Yeah. You know, everyone's got to do their bit. Yeah. And I think David's suggesting, well, he should have are we going to see a cut in CEO salaries? That's right. And, of course, we haven't heard anything Even about that. Even politician salaries, are we going to see a cut there? That's right. Hey, for the a, greater good. a lead talent like this ain't cheap. And there he is, um, Alan Joyce. Back off, to off, basics. Yeah, back to <laughs> basics. No, that's, I uh, think in the days when they used to hand around the Fermo flask. Yeah, Warren Brown in the Daily Telegraph. Yeah, I've often read his cartoon, that one. Mm. John Spoon of the Australian. Qantas. Mr Joyce said he expected Qantas would not do any meaningful international flying until July next year other than to New Zealand and possibly some other countries within travel bubbles with capacity to recover only to 50% in the 2022 financial year and 75% in 2023. Yeah. Uh, I think John's suggestion here is going to be a lot 2025. That's right. And of course, these are explorers. <laughs> exploring um, the jungles, yeah. the outback well, we of Australia. Places uh, sort of uh, not being used, nature seems to take them over. Yeah, but the tyre is lying there. Yeah. If it's just sitting there underneath, um, you know, cooling its heels, the tyre wouldn't be there, you yes. know, lying on its side. A crumbling empire. Mm, that's right. And of course, Mark Knight for the Herald Sun loves to do cartoons about planes falling to bits in, in flight. And here's another one where... Um, Qantas earns roughly two-thirds of its money from loyalty and domestic travel, which by year's end should be back to at least 70% capacity. So we have a bit of a conflict there to what Ellen Joyce is saying. Yeah. And some of the financial people are saying, well, you know, most of their income comes from local. 
Mm. Fasten your tray tablets, and of course, <laughs> the staff are frying out everything else. Yes. Well, it's social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But but you know, out of all the social distancing stories, airlines are the worst because yeah, um, you know, flying um, bubbles there. No, but they're they're um, you know. Um, how can you social distance? They're not doing thing. every third seat and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, you know, but they say, oh no, we'll have masks. Good old masks. Yeah. Is that a toilet seat up there? Oh, of course it's a toilet <laughs> seat. <laughs> now, yeah. this is David Pope with the Canberra Times. Men of position, adverse findings. Now, this is interesting because the banner behind um, our ex-Prime Minister, um, Tony Abbott, um, is, is an amalgamated brotherhood of untouchable, well-connected men of position. And the design of that, and I like, see the blue tie down the middle, that's really important, that's a symbol. It's like union, the old union um, uh, uh, guilds, you know? Um, but this is not about a lot of well, people. Like this the is the Oddfellas Lodge and different ones like that, the Society of Men. No, but this is also about unions, unions yes. in particular. And of course, the phone's ringing off the, the hook. And well, wasn't that the Masonics? And you know it's you know it's Tony Abbott because it's Ditch the Witch because he hasn't been around for a while. But there's a picture over on the right, down the bottom of um, John Howard, and this is about the Dyson, the, the former High Court Justice Dyson Hayden, who's um, who's been um, uh, what he's uh, there's he's got six sexual harassment um, cases against him. And I've heard the comments were by some of the women that they felt that they couldn't complain about it because he had too much power in the position he was in. That's right, but these two men are the blokes who put him in. Yeah. Um, and, well, here, and here they are again. This David is a Rowe, financial, financial review, review yeah. yeah. Um, and here they are at the front of the, the Statue of Liberty, uh, sorry, of, of Justice, and behind uh, the, the statue, leering over her shoulder, is um is justice uh, uh hayden, dyson hayden yeah. and with his hand firmly slapped around her waist she is then dropping the sword of justice and there's there's uh, john johnny howard and, and um, saying, don't worry hansy yeah we stand by our man yes yeah, stand by your man and of course well, our man actually yeah yeah and i think there justice is blind that's right that's written on the thing obscured. Yeah. And, and it's got Me Too in the red. And John Howard's saying, yeah, Me Too. Well, he's, he's saying Me Too to... He's not worry. saying that, it's the Me Too, uh, or is he? Yes. Okay. He's saying Me Too to what uh, Tony's saying, you will look after you, Angie. Yeah. Um, David Pope, Canberra Times, same subject matter, um, Me Too moment, uh, Susan um, Kiffel, um, Chief Justice of the High Court did this um, study. She just completed the, an inquiry into yeah. it, and she came to the conclusion that yeah, six former there is a case yeah for six former judicial associates, yeah. and also yesterday um, a seventh persons come forward to um, to to do this, this say the same thing. And of course, um, if you notice that. Um, one of the, the scales of justice has been weighed down by the the wig. And you see there's two there's two there's two sets of hands behind that statue. It's so like it's, the, it's not um, actually it's not just it's not the just culture within that's the, right. It's not just one man. Yeah. It's it's the male culture. Yeah. And of course down the bottom is, is the high court building. Yes. But the flag is not half mast. And Federal Labor has a China problem. Yeah, finally, uh, Warren Brown of the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Federal Labor has a China problem, yes. The Red Scare from 47 to 57 was a period of paranoia about communists infiltrating or invasion in the United States and also in Australia. During this period, ordinary Australians and Americans were paralyzed by the fear of Reds under the beds, a belief that communist agents and sympathizers were secretly living amongst them. Are we seeing the Cold War between Australia and China? So, what well, is this referring to, Tom? On Friday afternoon, you see. Oh, uh, not another Friday afternoon. Oh, ACO raided one of the uh, federal MPs' um, 
office. Yes. And they have documents and stuff like that. And there's talk that he received, you know, funding from a not so legitimate me um, source. Another Chinese businessman. Yes, they think they might be, you know, like the old shopping bags of money. So the reason you put this cartoon is because you expect that next week's cartoon is going to have a lot more to do with this. Yes, I think we're going to see um, the story growing. Yeah. And well, it will be pursued by the Liberals. That's Mao sure. Tung. He was the chairman and he's obviously yeah, a chair in yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay, well, we look forward That's... to ne ne next week's exciting episode. Yes. God knows what's going to happen. Yeah, so um, we also we also have a version of this show. If you don't want to, if you can't stand um, Tom and me talking, we have another version of this show with music and just the cartoons. Um, so where can they find that, Tom? Well, they just need to go to cartoonmuse.com and click on digital library and that'll take you to the online site where the, you can read it online yeah and, and so refer, that's yeah. good night for me and it's uh good morning from you <laughs> <laughs> and um yes uh, so we as i said last week tom and me love cartoons we see them as um we see them as uh, 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 uh as um uh, important um, time capsules of our time um, and they refer to what's going down and um, the thing is so much is happening these days that the, these are important because if you go over them you can remember what's going on and you can't always remember what's in the flow of, polit of politics these days so much is going everything is it used to, you know a picture can replace a thousand words well it does and a cartoon has got a yeah. damn sight more but I'm just saying that um, you know, cartoons are so important and um, we, we love doing this show and I think it's very important. Okay, well, well it's goodbye from you. And goodbye from me. Bye-bye. <laughs>